Hey guys, in this video we're going to be checking out this new micro drone and it's a little bit different from the ones that you've been seeing on my channel recently. It's just, uh, basically a kit version. It's it's very simple and comes. it's basically toy grade. But it comes with a little bit bigger toy grade transmitter than you would traditionally see like with the Eoshin ones where they're like literally the, the little kid size. It's a little bit bigger, it comes with uh, bigger sticks here and you know, double A batteries in the back. But the, the interesting thing about this is it's very inexpensive. It's 5.8 gigahertz wi uh, FPV, not Wi-Fi FPV. And it comes with one of these all-in-one uh, FPV camera VTXs, um, similar to the TX-02. And reminds me a lot of like a tiny whoop, but without the fl F3 flight controller. Um, it's a little bit uh, just like out of the box. It just comes pre-flashed with its own firmware. So it's kind of a positive and a negative is that you, a negative in terms of you can't customize it uh, and change PIDs and stuff. But the nice thing about this is also, and is also also a positive is that you don't have to mess with flashing. You don't have to configure anything. Is what you see is what you get, and you just have to put it together and fly it. So for those of you that are really not into the whole c computer stuff and configuring and flashing, this is probably a, a good way to go to get into this. And it's. I think this is the whole thing here is like 40 or $50 somewhere in there. Uh, you do need to get goggles or some sort of an FPV monitor. So I will link a couple of uh, choices in the description for you guys to check out uh, so that you can be able to see the image that the uh, FPV system is transmitting. So I'll go ahead and I'll just go ahead and put this together. This is so simple. You got a little frame here. Uh, you get some seven millimeter motors and propellers. Comes with a uh, 300 milliamp hour 1S battery. Uh, this is uh, with a micro Lucy connector, battery charger, and proper removal tool. Uh, literally, uh, there's no soldering to do at all. You just um, stick this on here like so. So the battery go into the bottom here. And you just have to put these little pegs here onto the little holes like so. And then there's a little cover here for the flight controller and you just snap that in and you want to you want to make sure that this little lead here this is the lead that goes to the uh, all-in-one FPV camera so you want to make sure that that is secured here so once you snap in this top it's uh, actually pretty secure looks like I pinched the wire here a little bit so hopefully that's not gonna be an issue so you should probably make sure that that wire is tucked in before you snap this shut Putting on the motors is really simple. You just have to make sure that the colored uh, wire goes to the correct spot. So in this case here, the red connector goes to the red connector. And it would seem that the wire is a little long, so probably a good idea just to wrap it around maybe once like that. And then just let this stick the motor in. I think that's about as far as it'll go. And just do the same for the other four or the three motors. Okay, so then the next part is to put the camera into this little holder and then it would just mount in these little holes here. So the correct way to mount this is with a little notch here for the button so that it does, uh, doesn't get blocked. It is a pretty snug fit, so it shouldn't come out once it's in there. And then we'll just snap the camera in. Like so. And looks like the camera angle is adjustable. Obviously, I think it's not that tight, so in a crash, your angle is going to probably change, but but not during flight. If I just shake it here, it doesn't change, but if I push at it, it'll it'll move the angle. So uh, you can adjust your angle to your liking. And then the last thing is to just plug in the power. And you probably need to secure the loose cable here in this notch right there. And that's how I have mine set up like that. I'll put the props on. Okay, so all the props have a little letter on there. This is a 
And that corresponds to the letters on the arm here. I got that to focus. So you see a letter there. I'll tell you where you should put the prop. So there you go, it's all finished. Um, so let's you charge up the battery and just goes into the bottom like here. And you just plug it in. By the way, all the instructions are also here on the sheet that was provided. It's very simple and easy to follow. So this uh, kit does also come with a manual. It's pretty generic. Um, I think these diagrams don't correspond with this particular model, but the transmitter functions look like they are the same as what's in the picture. So you give you an idea what they look like. Basically, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's very similar to a lot of these toy transmitters. You got your um, low and high rates. Uh, you have uh, flip mode over here, your power button, and then you got your trim, trim buttons here as well. So I'll show you here on, on the transmitter itself, you got your rates over here on this button, flips over here, you got your trims, you got a power button here, and you got the gimbals of course, and that is it. Very, very simple. Just gotta put some batteries in here. And, uh, and you do need to um, attach the little uh, stick extenders here as well. Now this also does have headless mode if you press in the right stick. So it's going to operate like headless mode on a lot of all the other uh, toy quadcopters. You just press in and then it doesn't matter which way you push it, it'll always uh, go in the direction that you want, to, 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 no matter which way the camera is facing. Go ahead and uh, power this up here, make sure everything's working. You got a bunch of flashing lights. You got a indicator on the back of the FPV camera. I think the zero might mean the power is actually off. Let's go ahead and press that button. If you press and hold it. Yeah, this, this seems to operate just like the TX02. So I'm gonna go band F. And looks like it's still off, so I think you have to hold it for more than two seconds. I think five seconds. There we go. So now, looks like it's power switch will maybe 25, so that zero is off, 25, 50, 200. So I'm just going to go with 25. And we're on channel one, and I'm going to go to channel seven, which is the one I like, like to fly. Okay. And okay, so here is the image from the camera pointed at the transmitter right now, and it's working as expected. So at this point, it's got to charge the battery and go and give it a fly. Okay guys, so I'm here at the park, I'm going to review the DM02, DM002, and I found out that the instructions that were provided with this are incorrect in terms of the binding procedure and how to, how to unlock the motor, so I'm just going to go over that really quick so that you guys know how to do that. First thing you got to do is you got to plug in the battery, and then you get some flashing lights here, blue and red, turn on your transmitter. And then to bind it, you just throttle all the way up and down. It beeps twice, and then you're you're bound and you're ready to fly. Um, that's pretty much it. Got a little bit of wind today, so let's see how these seven millimeter motors do. I'm in the low rates right now. And the yaw is pretty slow. So let me show you what the yaw looks like. That's really slow. I'm gonna stick it in the high rate. Not much faster for the yaw there, but I think I'm gonna need to do that. I think 
If you're an experienced flyer, I would definitely go with a higher rate. Yeah. If you're inexperienced, the lower rate's fine as long as you they have a larger area because it's hard to make turns. So you can make turns like that. With the higher rates are a little bit easier. Let's see what these flips look like. Okay, that's so press the flip button, it beeps at you, the transmitter, and then it does a pretty quick flip. Okay, let's go ahead and just fly this Ryan FPV then. So as you can tell from the video, I crashed it <laughs> quite a bit trying to go through the basketball uh, backboard there. And it actually handled it pretty well. It uh, flies just fine. You just have to remember to recalibrate the gyro um, because it starts flashing because it, when you crash. And um, to do that, you just take your transmitter and you move both sticks down and on the inside. So this one goes like that and then this one goes like that together. So it'd be like, it'd be like that, and then the, the lights will start flashing, and then it'll turn solid again, and then you'll know that uh, it's been recalibrated. Otherwise, it'll start flying funny if you don't recalibrate after your crash. And then another, another thing about the crash is, is that because uh, the camera uh, mount is is uh, movable like this, when you crash, it just collapses back and doesn't break the antenna, which is kind of nice. So I've. Uh, the plastic gets kind of scratched up, but that's cosmetic. But other than that, it flies perfectly fine. Flight characteristics are kind of interesting. The roll and pitch, or the, the roll rate is kind of low versus the yaw. And then the, the pitch rate's higher, but it's 
uh, to make your turns, you have to mostly do your your yaws into the turns. The, the rolls seem to be kind of twitchy. So it unfortunately there's not a lot of tuning you can do with this because you can't program it. But that's sort of a pro and a con. It's something I, you could probably get used to. Flying with the transmitter seems to be fine. I didn't have any issues with that. It's just that I think there's a little bit of a lag in the control. I noticed that uh, especially on the roll, I would input the roll and it'd be a little bit, a little bit late. It wasn't terrible, but something that uh, you could probably get used to, but something worth uh, noting. So right now, this thing's like 35 bucks on Banga. It's, uh, I don't know if that's a sale price or not, but for something this inexpensive, and by the way, the camera is amazing. Uh, I, pretty much just as good as the TXO2 in terms of image quality and, and no breakup. And I think that's like 25 bucks right there. So. Uh, it's a good value, you know, for basically the price of a TX02 plus 10 bucks to get all of this extra stuff. Anyway guys, um, let me know if you guys have any questions. This is a pretty good product if you are interested in getting into FPV. Obviously you're going to need some goggles, um, but this is a good way to try it out if you don't want to spend a lot of, whole lot of money. So, worth giving a try. Let me know if you guys have any questions and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.